Arizona basketball advances to the Sweet 16, and it was on the back of some unexpected stars. Let's get started here on Locked On Wildcats. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. This show is brought to you by LinkedIn. All right, Arizona advances to the Sweet 16. All right, um, there is a lot of really, really good stuff to take away from this game. But first and foremost, again, we got to lead with Jaden Bradley. Jaden Bradley was the man, and the man is an understatement. What he did out there for Arizona was absolutely fantastic. And not only did what he did, he changed the game. And I think you could make the case that he almost, that he maybe even won the game for Arizona. Because, listen, Kylan Boswell, it was one of those games. You know, I think at this stage in the game with Kylan, we know that, you know, there's probably going to be a good game. And then there's probably going to be some really, really bad games. Uh, this game, he wasn't super destructive, but he wasn't looking to shoot open shots. Uh, and he was dribbling, uh, you know, he was committing stupid fouls. He was dribbling into the press. Just wasn't good. Um, Jaden Bradley, though, was the exact opposite. Jaden Bradley right now has a real, real feel for the game, and he comes in, and let's just be honest here, Jaden Bradley changes things. When Jaden Bradley comes into the basketball game, you know that Jaden Bradley is out there, and it starts with his defense. The way that he is able to swipe at the passes, the way that he is able to make plays is something that is quite unique. Um, there's now in this day and age, there's not a lot of uh, players that would be cool coming off the bench, especially cool coming off the bench when they probably know I'm hey, probably better than the starter. But Bradley has been that guy this season. And as the season has gone on, he has gotten even better. And not only has he gotten even better, he is uh, he has embraced this role. Again, when he comes in, things just change. And offensively, too, I think a lot, a lot of people mention, they're like, oh, well, you know, he can't play, or, you know, offensively, uh, he can't do anything. I say poppycock. That, to me, is nonsense because, yes, he can do things. He is a uh, – he is an underrated shooter. How about we put that in that if you, he has made a number of big time three point shots this year. And not only has he made a number of them, he's looked pretty comfortable doing them. And I think that's also what's kind of exciting about uh, Jane Bradley is that he looks pretty comfortable doing it. And the, uh, I think that's also kind of where it, uh, I think that's also kind of where it's at with uh, Jane Bradley. And, he can really finish in the paint when he gets when he gets downhill when he gets to the bucket he can uh, he's got probably one of the best abilities for a guard to finish in the paint that i've seen that little spin move obviously everybody's talking about against uh excuse me against gonzaga that or gonzaga um against uh dayton that was absolutely fantastic but he's had a number of those plays all year and then he's also had plays where when he's driving to the basket or when he's in transition he's able to finish against bigger stronger players and that's just not something you see a lot and not only is it not something you see a lot it's something that i think that i think sometimes we can maybe even take for granted a little bit again the dude has been absolutely fantastic and not only has he been absolutely fantastic, he's done it with a smile on his face. Hence, you know, you're seeing a lot of the Jason Terry comparisons, and I think those comparisons are spot on, honestly, in that, listen, he's probably not going to be JT. JT, in my opinion, is the best U of A pro uh, ever. 20,000, almost 20,000 NBA points. Gave LeBron the business in an NBA Finals. I don't know that Jaden Bradley's ever going to be that. But Bradley's certainly an NBA player in that he – he kind of checks off everything out except the outside shot. Defensively, he's obviously very, very good. He's pesky. And not only is he pesky, he can uh, shoot passing lanes. He can do a number of different things. And then offensively, he can just run the team. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to press Arizona and you want to press Jane Bradley, well, good luck because he showed against Dayton that he can not only do that, but he can get out and he can take advantage of you in that situation. And not only take advantage, either get a layup, get somebody else an easy shot. Again, Jane Bradley gets it. 
And there's a, uh, I think there's a, just an aspect to his game that is just refreshing. When he's out there on the court, you just kind of feel good that Jaden Bradley is out there on the court. And honestly, that is a, that's quite a good, that's a good thing. And he's got a soothing influence as well. When he's, when he's playing, you kind of know that, all right, you know, Jaden, Jaden's got this. Jaden is going to uh, get downhill. Jaden's going to either get to the basket. And what he also does, he doesn't do stupid things. He doesn't turn the ball over. He doesn't, I mean, he blocks shots. He gets steals. He just kind of fills the stat sheet. Again, you might not get a 35-point game from him, but you're going to notice his impact all throughout the stat sheet. And again, he's doing it without, uh, he's doing it without a ton of uh, fanfare in that, you know, he obviously doesn't necessarily care who gets the limelight. He just wants Arizona to win. And that's a that is an underrated quality in this day and age. Again, the young man is absolutely fantastic. Not only is he fantastic, it's just going to be fun to watch him continue to grow because Arizona needs him next year. I think there's all this talk about getting a veteran point guard, all of this. Jane Bradley's that dude. Now, they're going to have a decision to make a point guard because I don't believe for a second that Jaden Bradley is going to be cool coming off the bench again. But, again, I'm also not in Jaden Bradley's head. That is just a guess on my part. But either way, Jaden Bradley, yes, continue to do what you're doing because you have been absolutely fantastic at what you've been doing. And I think he's going to continue to be that way. Listen, people are saying, well, why don't you start him now? That's stupid. This stage in the game, you don't change the lineup or anything like that. But you got to have a quick hook with Kylan Boswell. Um, we're at the stage now where you got to win basketball games. And not only do you have to win basketball games, you have to you have to have the guys out there that are confident. And you know, Jay, or Kylan Boswell is not looking to shoot the ball. I mean, don't really know what else to say other than the fact that he's not looking to shoot the ball. And if he's not looking to shoot the ball, then well. I can't really have you out there. It's one thing if you're not, if it's one thing to not be destructive. It's another thing if you're just not going to do anything. When I got a difference maker like Jaden Bradley on the bench, then I think I got to go to him. And not only do I think I have to go to him, I have to be able to, I have to be able to, you know, rely on him. So again, Arizona is going to need him in a big way going forward because it's only going to get tougher from here on out. And you're about to play some teams with some big time point guards. That's just the way it is. Uh, you know, whether that's a, uh, you know, whether it's a North Carolina, whether, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, obviously, Godot isn't great, but R.J. Davis is. You're going to have players that Jaden Bradley is going to have to really step up on. And not only is he going to have to step up on, he's going to have to make their life difficult. But I think there's every reason to believe that he will be able to make their life difficult because he is a, uh, like I said, he is a player that um, I think he's built for the moment. He's shown many, many times this year that not only is he built for the moment, he's ready to he's ready to go and he's ready to make plays. So, Jaden Bradley, uh, Arizona is going to be relying on you in a big way. Now, there were some underrated players, one a starter, one a not, that I thought had some really good game, uh, really good moments as well. But first, Nissan. All right, here's the deal. Go find your next big adventure. Shop now at NissanUSA.com, my friends. Nissan USA. Again, go find your next big adventure. This is another one where you will thank me later for it. Because again, I got a Nissan now. I got a Nissan, or I got a Nissan, I almost said Nissan Altima. I got a Nissan Altima, and I love it. Gets great gas mileage. I like cruising around in it. Makes me feel cool. And on top of that, it's just it's a, it's a, just a good looking car. This isn't kind of your one of your old school Nissans where you're like, oh, what are you doing getting a Nissan? These Nissans are fantastic. Again, love love sliding around the city in it. Go find your next big adventure. Shop now at NissanUSA.com, and you can get good gas mileage in the process. So again, that's where it that's where it's at. Nissan, my friends, and FanDuel. All right, here's the deal with FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Okay, here's the deal. Um, with FanDuel, NCAA tournament's here. So what are we doing? What are we waiting on? FanDuel is where you can bet money and you can have a good time doing it. So again, check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Another one where you will thank me later for my endeavors and for my contributions. Because again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. This is all kinds of good stuff. And not only is it all kinds of good stuff, you will 
is another one where you kind of you're just going to probably thank me later for it. So you can bet before games, you can bet after games, you can do all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, as far as future bets. And you can bet in game. So again, check it out, fanduel.com slash locked on. And you also know that your money is going to be good in the process. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, 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 now. Let's get to a little bit more uh some unsung heroes. Mo Crevis. Now listen. Mo Crevis obviously didn't have the game that Jane Bradley did. I'm not going to sit here and say that he did because he didn't. But Mo Crevis was, and we've been saying this all year, there's going to be a couple games in the NCAA tournament where Mo Crevis is going to have to play and Mo Crevis is going to have to contribute. Yesterday was one of those games. Again, he didn't fill the stat sheet like Jane Bradley did, but guess what he did? He got you, got you a few big buckets, got you a few big rebounds. And he kind of set the pace a little bit in the first half. Mo is a different Mo is a difference maker. When Mo comes off the bench and comes into a game, you know that Mo is uh, you, Mo is skilled. Mo can do a lot of things. What the struggles that Mo has, I believe, are whenever he tries to dribble the ball, the ball is taken away. Stop dribbling the ball. Do not try to dribble the ball. We do not want to see any of that anymore. But what he can also do is very, very, he can do some very, very good things for you in that he can, uh, he can finish error. He generally can finish fairly good around the hoop when it's not contested by length. And what I mean by that is when he gets a rebound and just tries to go up, that's probably getting blocked or it's probably getting altered, but he's got pretty good back to the basket moves. He's got a pretty good feel for the game and just kind of a player that, you know, I think generally understands basketball. So there's, there, there's definitely that. He's also got a big time future in front of him. He's uh, again, he's seven foot two. He's not an Uber athlete, but doesn't he feel like the kind of player that Gonzaga has thrived with over the years that has just gotten better and better and better as his career has gone on. That's kind of the way that I feel for uh, that's kind of the way that I feel for Mo Crevis. And I think that's going to be the case. He is uh, from a rebounding perspective, from a scoring perspective. I think he can every be every bit of 13 and seven next year. And not only every bit of 13 and seven, um, he can also win. Uh, I think he can also win. Um, I think he can win some most improved player awards and he's going to be somebody that Arizona is going to desperately need to make an impact. And again, so Mo Crevis, big fan of Mo Crevis. And I think that Mo is going to be very good for Arizona. And honestly, I like him. I like his demeanor. I like how he goes about things. Mo Crevis, do it. Now, Keyshawn Johnson, Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn has been, Keyshawn's an interesting guy because again, Keyshawn came in here and you kind of wondered, all right, is he going to be hustle energy guy? And he really wasn't that for a good percentage of the season. He was kind of a, uh, just kind of, you know, I mean, he was good, but it wasn't necessarily that. He is, uh, he's kind of flipped the switch. Arizona was going to need him to make, or Arizona's was going to, Arizona needed him against Dayton and he delivered. And I just think about the start to that second half where he had the three pointer to start the second half. And then he had the driving baseline dunk. He looked fantastic doing that. And listen, you know, he's a player that when he plays with energy, when he plays with purpose, there's really nobody else like him on the roster. And not only is there really nobody else like him on the roster, there's also really no other, there's really no other player that, you know, can kind of replicate what he does. What he does, though, is he can guard a big, he can guard a small. Now, listen, somebody like Deron Holmes was going to be a difficult matchup for him. Duh. But Deron Holmes is going to be a difficult matchup for about anybody but I didn't like uh, I didn't like Keyshawn fronting him. I thought Keyshawn should have played with his uh, or should have uh, played uh, Deron Holmes to his back. But either way, uh, Keyshawn was able to do that. And then you're going to need him going forward because in certain games Arizona is going to have to be big. In certain games Arizona is going to have to go small. But all of those lineups revolve around having Keyshawn Johnson in the game. And if Keyshawn Johnson is in the game and he's actively engaged then Arizona should be in really good shape because, again, he's a player that should be able to just have good games. Again, I don't necessarily mean from a shooting perspective because sometimes the shot's going to come and go. But what I do mean is that he should be able to, from an energy perspective, impact the game defensively, 
Offensively, he should be able to do a lot of different things. Very excited to see what he can do going forward. And he's starting to get a little bit of NBA love as somebody that, uh, you know, he's shown that he can shoot the three a little bit. And I think if you continue to show that you can shoot the three and from an athletic, uh, from an athleticism uh, quotient perspective, he's certainly up there. He's strong. He's going to get a shot. You know, talked with Jack Murphy earlier in the season, and he said Keyshawn's an NBA player. And uh, it will not surprise me at all if Keyshawn is on an NBA roster. It's going to be interesting to see if that uh, holds true because, honestly, I think he's going to have a chance. You look around the league and they're – You know, somebody there's players that are, you know, going to be kind of like him. So he's got a big chance, but Arizona is going to need him and Arizona is going to need him in a big way because there's really nobody else. Like I said, there's really nobody else like him on the roster. Plus, he's got championship experience, which I don't think can really be understated. When you got championship experience, that's something that obviously helps out a great deal. He's got that, and he's got that in uh, spades. Obviously, 13-4 and last year in the national title game for San Diego State. And it was also a really good – Keyshaw Johnson's also a really, really good recruiting tool for Tommy Lloyd in that Tommy Lloyd brought in a player that at San Diego State was essentially just kind of a junkyard dog. Got rebounds, hustled, did a lot of, you know, stuff like that. Tommy Lloyd said, I'm going to let you shoot threes. I'm going to let you, you know, show a little bit of an expanded game. And he's done just that. Um, listen, he's already made more three-point shots than he than he made his entire time in San Diego State. And there was a play, like I said, where, you know, he drives to the basket and then does the reverse dunk. He's probably not getting that opportunity to make that play in San Diego State. So Keyshawn, again, some really good stuff out of him. And, and also, I think Keyshawn Johnson is the epitome of a player that uh, John Calipari tried to get. But John Calipari also lacks at Kentucky. It's just throwing out a bunch of, you know, 18-year-olds. You need to have players like Keyshaw Johnson right now, and Arizona is very lucky to have him. Now, I think uh, going forward, though, you're going to have to have more of these games because when you go against North Carolina, if you go against a North Carolina with an Armando Baycott, you're going to have a player that, uh, you know, is really, really big. I would imagine Umar Bala will play in that game, but Keyshaw is also going to have to be able to help on that. And Keyshawn, not only is he going to have to help on that, he's going to have to be effective offensively as well. Keyshawn's going to have to basically check off all the boxes in those games. But I also don't believe that anything is beyond Key, uh, do, what Keyshawn can do, because quite frankly, Keyshawn is the man. And he's another guy. He's kind of a calming influence. When he's out there, you know that he's going to hold players accountable. And not only do you know that he's going to hold players accountable, you also know that he's going to be the dude that, you know, when the chips get down, he's shown time and time again, he's going to be there. It's just about with Keyshawn just bringing it every single game with that energy. And there's no reason to believe that he shouldn't. Now, we're going to talk about Tommy Lloyd next. And uh, some of the, uh, some of the you know, made some pretty good plays in that game. But first, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, my friends. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. All right. Everybody has gotten a job through LinkedIn. You've probably gotten a job through LinkedIn. I've gotten a job through LinkedIn. Everybody has got one. And if you're somebody cool that hires people, you probably look to LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn.com slash locked on college for help in hiring people. Here's why it works. Everybody knows, like I said, the, uh, the things that work, the entities that work, people take advantage of them because they work. This is why, again, uh, this is, there's a reason that LinkedIn is used by everybody. And there's a reason that, you know, if you're not on LinkedIn, you're probably missing out on opportunities. So again, check it out. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Another one where it's just like, all right, what are you doing? If you're not on here, you should be on here at this point. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, 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 let's talk Tommy Lloyd. Listen, I love Tommy Lloyd. I've said that from day one. I think that Tommy Lloyd is awesome for Arizona. I hope he's here for 5,000 years. Um, you know, one thing that I think he is, he's definitely loyal. And I think he's probably loyal to a fault to a certain degree. I think he's pl- he plays some players just out of uh, loyalty that he probably shouldn't play. I think a Kerr Creasa last year when Kerr was stinking it up, there was never a thought to really take him out of the game. Uh, I look at uh, Kylan Boswell this year. There's been some of that, but I got to start giving, I got to start giving Lloyd some real credit here because 
with Kyle with Kylan Boswell in that second half. Now, listen, I would have probably pulled Kylan a little bit sooner because that lead was getting chipped and Boswell wasn't contributing, but they rode with Jaden Bradley in the second half, and you had to ride with Jaden Bradley. And not only did they ride with him, they didn't take him out of the game. That was something that I was a little worried about. I'm not taking Jaden Bradley out of the game. Uh, he's got to be in there. And honestly, I think it's got to be an even quicker hook. I, Boswell was in there for the first six minutes. He can't be in there for the first six minutes. I think he's got to be in there for about two or three because you know if you know when Kylan isn't playing well, you, you can just see it on his face. You can see it on his mannerisms. You can see it on everything. He wears those emotions on his sleeve, and it just kind of is what it is. You know if that's not going to be a Kylan Boswell game, and you can tell very early on that was not going to be a Kylan Boswell game. Now, I do understand you're going to continue to start him. I'm not mixing up anything right now, but uh, – Excuse me, a Bradley. You've got to have a bit. You've got to be able to have a quick hook there because Bradley's a difference maker. It's one thing if you're out there and you're not being destructive or turning the ball over, but teams don't have to guard you. Teams have to guard Jane Bradley. When Bradley comes in, things just change. So you got to keep that in mind. That so again, Tommy Lloyd. I give you. I'll give him a lot of credit for that because had he uh, continued to try to take Bradley out, put Boswell in, I'm not sure that Arizona wins the game. It was that big of a difference. It was that big of a difference. And then, I, uh, you know, he got Umar Ballo out of, the, out of the game in the pick and roll action. The pick and roll action for Arizona, that's always going to be a problem with Umar. Umar is awesome, but Umar also cannot hedge out. Umar also gets caught essentially, you know, twisting around, looking at stuff when, you know, he probably shouldn't. Umar Ballo, like I said, can do a lot of good things defensively in the pick and roll. That's just not one of them. Um, but again, that kind of is what it is because you're still going to take that 16 and 10 every single day of the week and we will embrace it and say, see you later. So uh, he got him out, got key shot in, but then he went back to Umar at some point because the problem with uh, having Deron Holmes out there is he was going to foul the entire team out. Arizona was having to foul him left and right to keep him off the block, to be able to move him off the uh, paint. And that's something that you don't Id ideally want to have to do. And then Umar came back in and Umar was good. And so again, there was that. And then he brought in Kylan and Kylan made two big free throws as well. So I thought Lloyd pressed the right buttons. I think, like I said, I think there needs to be even a little bit of a quicker hook, but I get it because again, you don't want to totally uh, shatter a kid's confidence, but we're also done with courtesy minutes now at this point. If you're Arizona, you're looking to win basketball games and you can't let minutes slide through, especially when you got really, really good teams coming up and you're looking to break through to that first final four in a long time. But this roster, though, like I said, this roster is ready to go. This roster is ready to move. And it, this is going to be something with Arizona where they got to continue to push this. Uh, you always hear people talk about, well, you know, next year they're going to be this. Next year they're going to be that. Forget about next year. It's all about this year. And when I say it's all about this year, next year's promise to nobody. So, you know, with Arizona, you got to be able to continue to string these wins together. I mean, heck, think about 97. Everybody was talking about, you know, well, next, this will be a good test or uh, tune up year because then 98, that's when you're going to be ready to rock and roll. Guess what? You won the title in 97 and then you got bounced from the Elite Eight in 98. So you never really know. And there is that. But overall, very good performance from Arizona. Let's uh, continue to be happy about that, but then moving forward. All right. Moving forward, though, tomorrow, tomorrow's show, we are going to start breaking down in totality the Sweet 16 matchups, the possible Elite Eight matchups, and everything that goes into it. But just still wanted to stay focused on the Dayton game because there were a lot of players and there were some real coaching moves that I think deserved that. But on that note, you have a great rest of your day and you have been listening to Locked on Wildcats.